Hello everyone, Cliff here, I'm in my shed again, um, continuing the Swiss wrap tools that I've made. Um, I'm not all that enamoured with the Swiss wrap method to be honest with you, but um, I did the previous video using the Delrin pushers and they're great, they work fine, but they do foul and even though I'm relatively experienced in making coin rings, you, I, I find it difficult to know when they're going to foul. I think the last time I did it, I actually broke one, or damaged it, and damaged the coin that I did, which is in the other video. Um, it's just difficult to gauge what's going on with it. I, I find it difficult anyway. But I do like to try new things and make stuff to do new things, so I'm going to persevere with it. And so I've made the brass pushers for it now. Uh, I'm going to do two coins again. I've got an half crown that I've already formed into a cone. This one has got a little bit twisted, but the, the one upside to this Swiss wrap method is it does seem to sort that sort of problem problem out with your coins. Uh, that started off with a 15 mil hole. And obviously it's a lot bigger now. Um, I've stretched it basically so it just fits into the big cone. And I've got a two shilling which I'll put a 10 mil hole in um, and I'll be doing that second. But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this. I'm going to wrap it as I did in the other videos um, with a bit of PTF, a couple of wraps PTF and a little bit of insulating tape. I'm not going to wrap this one an awful lot because there's not a lot of room for it to go to get down in here. Um, and it probably would need re annealing. I've, I've stretched this, I think there's enough in it just to get this down a little bit further. Um, but I'll show you that as I do it. The, the brass pushers I've made, um, I don't think you'll be able to see it, I'll show it again a bit closer up. But I've got some witness lines on them, and on the big one, there's a bigger, which I, I would call the top which is the side I'm going to push because the bigger gap between the actual top of the pusher and the first witness line is pretty much in line with as far as it can go in the cone. Um, I mean that's just a guide, a guide so that you, you know where you're going, you don't go too far. So I'll wrap this coin and stick it in there and get it on the press and press it. Alright, so I've wrapped this coin with a bit of PTF and some insulating tape. It's just about flush with the top of the cone. I should have probably stretched it, pushed it through the stretcher a little bit more, made it a little bit smaller. Um, but I think I can get away with this. So I'm going to use my big cone, big pusher rather. And I don't know if that's going to come up on the camera, but the gap between this... So the gap between this witness line and this, which I call the top, is bigger basically than the gap between this witness line and the bottom. And I know that this witness line is as far down the, the cone as I can go. I probably won't get that far with this push anyway. I just want to get this down so that I can carry on. So like I say, this is going to need annealing again, this coin. So I'm being very careful to make sure that this pusher is going to go inside the, the cone. I don't want to catch the edge of it and damage it. Right, and I'm way off of the um, witness line there but I'm going to stop that there because I really need, I think, to anneal this one again. I'll tell you that, the top always cuts off quite nicely. And I'll just unwrap the coin. And there you can see it's 
it's gone a lot further down now so it's way further down in the cone so I'm going to anneal this again wrap it again and push it some more and use probably the other cones pushers I will say pushers okay so I've re-annealed it uh, I'm around the front of me thing here and I'm finding it a little bit awkward Hopefully that will focus in a minute. Obviously it's going to fit the big cone perfectly because that's where we've just taken it to. And if we were starting out with this we'd look at that big cone and then the next one down. Probably just about get away with the next one down but there is a danger of it slipping into it like this and that's catastrophic if, if that does happen. So I'm going to re-wrap this coin, I'm going to go again because I know I've got about one of these witness lines further to go and that's going to put it okay to use this coin, this pusher. Sorry, I keep saying the wrong things in this video. It's very cold. So that's what I'm going to do with this. I'm going to wrap it and push this through. So I'll wrap it and get back to the, to the press. Okay, so I've wrapped it again, same way, a bit of PTF around it and then some insulating tape. I'm just going to push it, try and get it in there evenly. Get it in there pretty level. And then making sure I've got my big witness mark up. Go ahead this time, now I know it's well annealed, I'm going to go right down to the top witness line. And that's about as far as I can go. Again, you can see the tape's cut off of the, the coin. Now I would like to carry on straight down with this. So I do know that the next pusher will cover the coin okay. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use one of the cotton pads. I'm just going to put the cotton pad in. Put the big pusher back in there. Make sure that's down as far as it will go. You see the cotton pads do a wonderful job if you're only doing a little bit and you haven't got any other wrapping on it. So now if I just come around the front. Now this will focus. This is the second pusher in the uh, set and now that's pretty much on there even if it comes right across to there which it can't because it would be out of the it would be up against the thing. It's, it's very unlikely that that's going to twist going to be very unlikely that that's going to twist into it now. So because I've taken this out, I'm going to re-wrap it. As you can see, well, I hope you can see if this will focus. All the detail is pretty well preserved on the coin. And this is a 1959 half crown. These are pretty rare. These nine, They're not very rare, but they're uh, rarer than a lot of them. So I'm going to re-wrap it and then start using the smaller cone. Pusher, not cone, pusher.
All right, so the coin's wrapped again, and I'm going to be using this smaller pusher than the next one down. Again, I've got the witness lines on these. I've got a bigger one at the top to the bottom. I mean, they're just, just, just witness lines. You have to make your own mind up where they'll fit. So making sure that I get that that way round with the big pusher on top of it. Again, they're tight together and as far as I can go because this second one won't go right through the the uh, cone but again as far as I can go is this first witness line on the top <coughs> uh, push the coin in I'll push it down with a big one to start with. Just make sure it's down there. Now I'm just going to double these up. I'm going to start pushing. I'm just going to stop there just to just to square up my pushers just to make sure I don't catch the actual cone and then carry on down and that's as far as that feels like it wants to go and that's pretty much bottomed out with the with a, with the uh, cone and I'll get get the pusher out of the way again the top always comes off gets cut off and the coin is stuck. Let's give that a little tap. Just unwrap this. Hopefully you can see it's getting pretty straight now. But I'm going to go ahead and push this right the way through. So I'm going to anneal it again, rewrap it, and then we'll push it right through with the third pusher. Right, so I've rewrapped it. I'm going to push it into, okay, I'm just going to use the second pusher just to push it, I won't be able to push it right there because I haven't got the strength, I've just pushed it down into the cone quite sort of evenly and now I'm going to put the third pusher in, the next smaller one down, I'm going to get the cup the little catchy cup and just put the second pusher on top So now I'm going to push this right through into the cup should go any time now and that's it that's it the um, second and third pusher are just right to actually push it through the 
the first come. So that's it with the first one. Let's come around the front again. As you can see the tape's cut off the top, give that a chance to focus. And if we take the tape off, comes off easy with the PTF and the tape on there. And that's it. It's gone right through. It's it's almost straight walled and you do seem to get this little bit of a bevel in it. But I mean that's fine because I'm going to size Let's see if I can get this focused and say that again. Yeah, so that's right through the first cone and that's pretty much straight or straight as it's going to get and you get this little flare on the end, I don't know why but that's fine because that when you put this into the sizing cones that gives you your shape and obviously it needs a lot more finishing but that's as far as I'm going to go with this one um, obviously I'll be finishing it um, but this is for a job this ring so that's it that's the size of it through the first cone with an half crown ring with a 15mm hole and that will give you a ring just short of an S and it will get up to a T that way round but of course you've got the lip on the inside of the you don't, you don't seem to get as much lip to mess about with on this Swedish wrap method. So that's that one. Um, I am going to stretch that a bit because I have got uh, a job for this ring. But that's how it's going to come out when it's through the first cone. Right. I'll, um, I'll wrap the uh, two bob and um, we'll have a go at that. Alright, so here's the two shilling ring. This had a 10 mil hole punched in it. Um, I've opened it out now, so it's about 20 millimeters across the outside diameter on the exit hole. Uh, I'm going to wrap it now and then we'll take it over to the press. Right, so I've wrapped it. Before we go to the press, um, it's just a little bit too big to go. It, you'd probably just about get away with putting it into the uh, second cone, but it's a little bit proud, so I'm not going to do that. I'm going to just give it a little press in the... Um, first cone with a second die with a second pusher so I'm going to put that in there push it down in there tight and that pretty much flushes up the uh, pusher on the coin now I can use any of the other pushers to I'm just going to push it down until it bottoms out on this cone and then that will give me plenty of room to go into the second cone. So over to the press and I'll push this down. Alright, so this is pushed in sort of thumb put. I've just pushed it down with my thumbs. And I'm just going to make sure that the, the pusher is reasonably central. in the cone and I'll just use one of these little pushers and just push it down until it bottoms out and that feels like that's about there yeah that's bottomed out in there 
and we'll take it out it's still pretty intact the um, the top is still on there so what I'm going to do is put it in the into the next one drop down there I'm just going to push it down with my thumbs and just to make sure because the top has been a bit crushed again making sure that I don't go too far with the uh, pusher I'm going to push it down a little bit further into the second cone taking it reasonably easily and I'm going to get this out and anneal it again and carry on pushing it so here's the coin so far I've just re annealed it I'm going to wrap it again um, before I do that I just want to check that I, which pusher is going to fit it the best and in this case it's the third one and that will fit quite nicely on there so I'm going to wrap this now and then we'll be going in with the cones. Now the third pusher, you, know, you have to make a mental note of all this yourself when you're doing them. Don't, don't really want to go any further than either of the first witness lines, either the smaller one or the longer one. But you don't really want to go any further down than that because just beyond that is where it starts hitting the, the die. So that's the one I'm going to be using. I'm going to push it down. I don't need to go all the way so I won't need a second cone, a second pusher. But then I'm going to need some of these to finish it off. Now this, the fourth one in the, in the series of pushers won't go right through. The smallest of them will. That will push it right through into the cone. That's what I'm aiming for. And that's going to take a combination of all three of these. Just, just to try and make myself clear, if I push that down to as far as it will go, with the smallest pusher, it's, it's not, not all the way there. That pushing against that, it's not going to make it. So to get this right through into the cup, I'm going to need all three. But I'll go ahead, wrap the coin and push them through and show you that. It's annealed and it's going to go a fair way down into the, to the actual cone. So I think we should be able to do this in one more go. So I'll wrap it and get on with it. Okay, so I've re-wrapped it and I'm going to put it back in the cone. Obviously now I've re-wrapped it, it's going to be a lot tighter fit and it's going to be nearer the top. But I know that the typically my card ran out just then, hopefully, hopefully I can edit that together. But I can get that flush with the top, I'm just going to um, use the third cone and just tap it down a bit. because I know the second cone fits nicely on the top so I'm going to go ahead push this down and I've got it one away from the top
tops come off again as I would expect so I'm going to put a little pad in I'm going to push the fourth cone down in there Take that down till it bottoms out and I'll get these out and just do that off camera I'm going to put another pad in and now I'm going to use the smallest cone, I'm going to shove that in. Along with the next one. Put it over the cup, put the third cone on, hopefully as long as I get this lined up properly. Push it right the way through until it pops out the bottom. So there's the there's the final cone, it's just gone through the end there, and here's the coin in the bottom. Let's just put it over on the bench and I'll move the camera. Right, so here it is, the two shilling. Just unwrap it. ETF stuck to this one a bit. But there it is, the two shilling ring pushed through the second cone. So obviously they would want more shaping and finishing, but um, So on the milled rim, this has taken it to about a H and three quarters, and just about a J on the on the exit hole. So I mean that's what you can achieve with the two these two cones and the pushers. Um, they obviously need finishing. They're not they're not finished. And this is by no means an exhaustive demonstration of the Just bash that out. I have to take the first one off first of course. So that's them, that's the two rings in their sort of first first out of the cone state, obviously they need more work. Um, you've got to shape them, do what you're going to do with them, clean the ends up. I didn't do any cleaning on these as I went, you can clean them. Like I say, this certainly isn't an exhaustive demonstration, it's just basically what, what they will achieve. 
obviously you can take the rings even when they're cut when you first do the forming cones and change them get them more straight before you start but that's just a quick video on using these cones with the brass pushers and I know I keep calling them cones in the video but they're brass pushers and the two cones and the little delrin pusher just to help you get them out when they get stuck because the tape does come up the side and sticks them. Thanks for watching, I hope that helps. If you've got any questions, if anyone's interested in them you can find them on the website or you will be able to find them on the website when I do put them on the website. Thanks for watching and I'll see you again. Bye for now.